I was in a hurry to be doing something. And that's what a lot of you are doing. You watch a couple of videos, whether it be mine or someone else's, and you think you saw this before and you go into the chart and you're looking for something that resembles what you think you've learned in one or two videos. And then you push a button and then you're shocked at the results not being what you expected. That's doing it wrong. My children have messed around in paper trading and demo accounts doing the same thing. It's normal. It's normal. You wanted to be able to sit down, watch a video or two, and then go in there and be able to find something that banks, investment firms, you know, big, huge trading entities are in here running roughshod over everybody with. And you think you're going to watch a couple ICD videos or anybody else's bullshit and walk out there and push a couple buttons. And all of a sudden, all this starts falling in your hands and you're rich now. Man, I've never taught that. I've never taught that at all. I have been the largest opponent to that shit than anybody else on YouTube. That's what makes me boring because I'm not out there being that flashy person and telling you, do this, do that. I'm telling you, be fucking boring. Be boring, get 25 pips a week. 25 pips a week. If you can do that, you can make a lot of money if you're consistent. You can make that whatever you want it to be, but you can still lose your ass aiming for that 25 pips a week. If you are not diligent, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're reckless, if you're a gambler at heart, you'll do that. But if you go through that 2020 mentorship properly once more, and you find consistency and maybe you get funded and now you're taking withdrawals from that funded account and you're getting paid. I have students all around the world that are reporting that they're bringing their receipts. They're showing you on, on their own social media accounts and sending it to me on my Twitter. Young man went to the number two spot on the FTMO leaderboard, 70 grand. You know, that that's results, folks. You know, that's not contrived. That's not paper trading. And that's, that's, to me, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs> okay. But there's a lot of other folks that get these smaller little victories that just want to stay quiet and private. And they're not obligated to share their fucking experiences with you. Just like I'm not obligated to do shit for you either. But I love doing it. I love it. But I'm not obligated to any of you. And when you start making money and you see these people trolling what you've learned, you're not fucking obligated to share anything with these people. These people are miserable. They're miserable or they're competitors and they're just getting their asses kicked by what I'm doing, which is both entertaining. But if you go through that 2020 mentorship and you're consistent and you want to increase your understanding, what's the next logical step in learning? Go through the core content. It's a lot. It is a lot, but because you have that model to work with, you'll be able to respect and understand better where those concepts could be plugged in and where others may not even be of any interest to you. You do not, let me underscore this and preface it before we go any further. You do not need core content lessons. That model I have made now more private mentorship students consistent and profitable by sharing that publicly and they went through several years of mentorship with me because they were trying to do everything they're trying to place all these tools in the proper sequence there isn't a sequence where you put all these things in the right place now there's a way of leaning on certain approaches to like for instance commitment traders okay that's a, that's a long-term tool for intermediate term trading it's useful in that regard. Could you use it as a backup or a confluence for your day trades and you're trading only in that direction? Sure. There's nothing wrong with that. Do I need it? Fuck no. You don't need it either. SMT, I try to look for that in every single trade, but I don't demand it. it if, if it doesn't exist in the trade, I'm not going to be afraid to tell, still take it. I'm going to still take the trade if I see that there's a reason for it to go to a specific point of liquidity. If I know where the draw of liquidity is and I'm in there at the right time of the day and I know everything's in, on my side and they've already worked the opposite end of liquidity 
if they've taken buy side and I know they're going to be reaching for and co going going <laughs> counterparting with the sell side then I'm going to take the trade if I see a bearish breaker if I see a institutional order flow entry drill which is a partial tap into a fair value gap um, you're, you're all wanting to know well when is a fair value gap closed and when is it left open that that's what charter members learned you're not entitled to that so that's the reason why i don't answer a lot of your questions from core content that's the reason why core content videos have the comment section turned off because i don't owe you those answers okay but i did share those videos to keep people from wanting to buy them from other people scamming and frauding but they are useful to you if you have an understanding about what it is you're trying to do and that 2022 mentorship model is the nuts and bolts of going out there and making ends meet. Can you turn into a millionaire with it? I personally believe you can. Can you blow your account and lose money? Yep, if you break every rule I've shown in that, yes, you will. If you follow every rule in there, but you do poor risk management, money management, you will still blow your account. Let me say that again, because you probably didn't hear me. You can do everything right in terms of charting, and entry and everything but if you over leverage risk too much or you're not properly managing your trades you can still blow your account how could that happen by not knowing how to handle yourself when you lose you'll go in there and you'll push a button okay you do, you do something wrong no problem the average student or trader will say okay let me reevaluate is the trade still valid not Oh, no, 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 no. I'm right. Let me go in there and do this again. Well, that's imposing your will. You can't do that in the marketplace. You, Your will is insignificant compared to the market. The market can do whatever the fuck it wants to do. And the people that run it, they make the rules. They change everything. If they want to reprice it to wherever they want to reprice it, you can't change it by your buying and selling pressure horseshit. Your harmonic patterns, your Elliott wave, all that stuff. Your order blocks. <laughs> I'll throw my shit in the, in the hat too. When there's manual intervention, nothing fucking works. You are all wrecked. Okay? And we're in that category too. We would fall victim in those instances. And there's no way to prevent that. So there's always risk. Always. But what happens if you go through core content... And there's other videos. What should you go into next? Um, personally, I think that you should go through the Market Maker Primer course. So the the best case scenario, looking back and mentoring again publicly and all the questions and, and the things that I saw come up as inquiries, I think the proper order would be 2022 mentorship. Study that first because that gives you right into the charts. It gives you something that gives you context. What is it you're going to be doing? If you learn everything from my YouTube channel, what's it look like? When it works, what does it look like? This is one interpretation of it. Okay? It's easy. It's straight to the point. And you also see people all around the world making money with it. So there's proof. The second thing is to build understanding and fortify opportunities that can be used in other time frames, not just intraday, by using the core content. So go through all 12 months, core content, study that. And whatever resonates with you, you pull out. Everything that doesn't resonate with you, just ignore it. I don't know why everybody makes a big deal about this, but you, there are things that are just not going to be pertinent to you as a trader in the style that you're trying to trade. And I don't take any offense to that. I'm, I'm, I'm practical. But you need to be practical with yourself as a, as a developing student. you got to be realistic and practical with yourself. You're not going to be able to learn this real quick. You're not going to be getting rich real quick. You're not going to be able to tell your boss, fuck off. I just watched this video series. You're done. You're fired. Because th that's not what you should be doing. <laughs> okay. And it makes me think about a video suggestion I saw this morning. <laughs> I woke up and I was on Twitter. I mean, not Twitter, on YouTube. And I saw it. There was a video that said how to, how to day trade working full time and not get fired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who did it, but I just saw it. I thought it was funny. But. I mean, that's a series I should do. But once you go through 2022, go through core content and then go through the Market Maker Primer course. Okay. If you do that, I think honestly, that is real good for the technical side. But anywhere in between them, wherever you feel like you need it, you should go through the, like the ends, 
series where it kind of like reminds you of what it is you're doing. That is a mission statement type teaching. It grounds you into thinking, okay, I'm not out here trying to promote millionaire mindset to you go out here and you want to be living the Instagram life. I'm out here trying to help people find a way to get a second income. That's it. And if it works out that you make $200 a week or $250 a week and it's an extra $1,000 a month, you know what, folks? That is In these times, it's helpful because I have a lot of money and it costs me a lot of money when I'm out to the grocery store. And I always think to my wife all the time, like, how are people doing this? It's hard. Like, it's really hard now. And I overpaid a lot for cars this year. And, you know, this house I purchased, I knew I was paying an inflated rate. I don't care. I don't have I have the funds to be able to do it. And it doesn't hurt me. But the average person out there, you know, you may be being priced out of a house. You may be priced out with the interest rates. OK. And if you can make an extra thousand dollars a month and I'm not promising that everybody's going to do that, but I firmly believe that it's within the realm of possible for the majority of you that do work diligently towards mastering yourself and controlling risk. And you'll see that these things, they statistically have an edge, but you skew that edge as a trader, that, that individual that comes into this. So you're going to need to listen to some things to remind you what it is that's going to cause you problems. And you might want to listen to the series I did where if I could go back and tell myself what I know now at 20 years old, because I had to live two different lives hiding from a gold digger. And I don't have any shame in saying that. And some of you ladies out there may think, oh, you're a deadbeat asshole. You didn't take care of your kids. My kids were taken care of. My kid, my, my oldest son, he was taken care of. We had joint custody. But I had to hide a lot of things and, and live a certain way to keep my gold digging affair, which I was not aware that she was married when I slept with her. And I own it. It's mine. I did it, you know, but you know, these things were a result of me trying to do what you see these Instagrammers do today. These living fast kind of people. And I invited that kind of stuff into my life and not knowing I was naive. And this woman knew that I had something and she wanted it. And I found myself in a situation where I had brought a, a person in the world that we didn't sit down and say, hey, let's have a child together. She had a relationship that she was married and a son that I didn't know about. And I fell victim to that situation. And I talked to you through that and I encourage my own children. I'm actually talking to my sons in all of these videos on YouTube. I'm talking to them. And because I'm pouring my heart out, I'm talking to them with my vision of their faces in my mind as I'm talking to them. It makes it feel like I'm talking to you because it's sincere. Number one, two, it's real. It's it's real. And if you don't listen to those types of lessons and you do the same things I've done when I was younger, you're going to invite those types of things into your life and it will wreck all kinds of progress. Like I think to myself all the time, like I know how these markets work. And I also know how I work. I know how I self-sabotage. I know how I get a case of the ass where I think nobody's better than me. And I know all of these character flaws. I have all these character flaws like everybody else, but I also have greater disadvantages because I have a mental disorder where I have a chemical imbalance that just will not relent sometimes. And you, you experienced it obviously several times listening to these Twitter spaces where I'm at the mercy of whatever I'm feeling at the moment. And some of you have reported that you have these same things and it's hard, isn't it? But if you don't have a way to connect with the mentor that's teaching you and know that that's something that yes, in some many, many ways it can be viewed as a hindrance or an obstacle, but there's a way through that too. And it's not going to be easy. And for folks that don't have that, if you're not bipolar you know, and you're just a, a normal person, you know, I envy that because I don't know what that feels like. But you have an advantage over someone like me. And when I first started teaching on baby pips in 2009, 2010, that that social experiment that I, I introduced, I, I wanted to see, could I get the same result of other people coming up? like like I did 
and I presented the content and the lessons in the order that I went through discovery. And unfortunately, it's not a matter of me failing. It's just I didn't get I didn't get that test tube result where someone came out like me. And obviously, I went down a dozen different rabbit trails. And the whole idea was how you're going to study ICT and content. But uh, you want to have a study journal. You want to go in with a mindset that you're doing it for a particular reason. You're not going to be distracted. You're not going to spend your time chasing social media entities and worshiping other people. And I'm on the top of that list. Okay. Showing appreciation. That's a respectful thing. Yes. But you don't need to constantly lavish me with love and all that other stuff. You focus on you. And every time you watch a video and every time you study in the charts, you read your mission statement. What is it? What is it you're doing? Why are you doing it? And what is that goal and result? Everything you do should be aiming in that direction. If everything you're doing right now is opposed or slight deviation from that direction, you're wasting your fucking time. You're wasting your time. Because you have to have a course, a direction. You have to know where your bearings are. And you got to constantly be working in that direction. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to fall to the wayside because you've done something too soon, rushing to get in there and start pushing buttons and making money. Everybody right now, everybody wants to go get out, go out and get funded because they see folks tweeting to me, "Hey, I'm funded now. Hey, I'm getting a payout now." Well, what does that create in weak-minded individuals? And folks, when I say weak-minded, I'm not trying to say you're stupid. I'm not saying you're daft. I'm not saying you're a, you know, a dense person or a dunce. <laughs> I'm saying that it's normal for you to want to rush into that. You want to do what everybody else is doing. And if they're doing something that's making money, guess what? Everybody was wanting to do that. But I'm unfortunately that kind of guy that's going to tell you, you're going to have to work before you get there. You're going to have to study a lot and you're going to have to defer weekend things that you usually do. You're going to have to change your lifestyle and save money, change your spending habits, remove, maybe even remove certain types of friends and possibly family members from your influence or removing their influence from you. And I had to do that. And it didn't feel right. It didn't feel normal. It felt like I was being, well, I felt like I was isolating myself through depression, but these were conscious decisions I made. It wasn't like I reduced my circle of influence because of anxiety. Because I had that experience too when 2001 happened. I ended up having generalized anxiety and developed agoraphobia, which is a fear of being around other people. And it was all based on September 11th, you know, when those buildings and such in New York happened. And everything was a, a, a source of fear for me. But I don't have any of that kind of fear, like nothing. Like I'll walk out there in a burning building. I don't give two shits. I ain't worried about nothing now. But that generalized anxiety, that fear, that will creep into you in this trading endeavor faster and when you're not prepared for it. And it'll, it'll completely derail you. It'll take you completely out of their focus. You won't know what it is you're doing and you'll lose sight of why you're doing it. There's so many folks out there that have started doing this. And because they were not able to master themselves, and wrestle their internal demons, these things that are going to manifest themselves. You know these things that you do all the time. You, let me ask you a question. Like, think about it like this: Have your personal relationships have they been healthy? Now, for many of you young guys, it's probably going to be no. I'm going to tip. I'm going to tip you off on something right now. If your personal relationships you know long-term relationships or the ability to hold on to a long-term relationship if that is a struggling point i'm going to tell you something right now you're going to fucking suck as a trader you're going to suck because you are not going to commit to what's required to learn this that's the reason why my students the better students are the women because they're usually more committed to whatever endeavor they invest in 
think about it. When they get with you as a male, you know, they're usually the one that's hurt most because they've poured everything into it. They've signed on. They're, they're committed. And it's easier for a guy to walk away. So if you have those character flaws in your personal relationships, that's a warning sign that you have things that you're going to have to wrestle with. And you're going to try to put blinders on. And right now you're trying to ignore what I'm saying. You don't want to hear this. This is supposed to be about trading. No, this is about succeeding and, tr and training yourself properly, studying. You see, I don't give a fuck about cars and houses and bank account statements and who to fuck can win competitions. I care about successful students. That's what I want. And I know what causes that success to be deferred or denied. And these are the factors that are going to come up and people don't write about it in books. They don't talk about it on their YouTube channels because it's going to immediately cause their audience to do what? Take inventory and it's not going to make them feel good about themselves. And they're not going to want to come back and watch their next fucking video because the last time they were there, they got a dose of reality and that reminded them that, hey, they're a fuck up. So it's better for you to hear someone that had that same fucking problem and how I fixed it. I owned it. It was a responsibility of my own. I made those mistakes. I had problems. I had commitment issues because my first wife left me. All these things I had, I had issues, I had chips on my shoulder. So I wanted to go out and prove to the world and her and her family members and my own family members and my friends that I could fucking do better than all of them. So when I went out there and I pushed that first trade, the option in orange juice futures. And some of you are thinking, you can trade orange juice? Yeah. <laughs> you used to be able to trade bacon, you know, pork bellies, but they don't trade them anymore. But I wanted to go out and prove myself because I needed to fix that pain. When what I was doing was I'm using that pain as a reason to do something that the chart didn't tell me to do. And people still come to my content with those character flaws those internal demons and they're going to see an optimal trade entry in the chart they're going to see a fair value gap model 2022 in the chart they're going to see a breaker in the chart they're going to see everything they want to see but really what they want is an escape from that painful thing that they're feeling right now they want to be distracted and the worst thing you can do is use my videos as a distraction to those problems that's in you right now. You have to wrestle with them. You have to fix them. You have to take ownership and responsibility. If you cause those problems in your personal relationships, then you need to address the root causes of them. Change it. Because I'm going to tell you something. I could not find consistency when I was painfully hurting because my first wife left me because everything I was doing was just a reason to take away that pain much like a person that would use drugs much like a person that would drink alcohol I was self-medicating distracting myself from the real problems because I felt like I wasn't worth it she left me and I was in school learning computer science and I was telling her, look, I'm going to do well. Not, not, I wasn't a trader yet. I wasn't, a tra I wasn't going to be a trader. I didn't know anything about trading for me as a career. I learned about it when I was 15 and 16 from my uncle, but I just didn't want to do it. But I was hurt. I wanted to do something to change that pain and make myself be viewed by everyone around me as, wow, you're successful. And if I heard other people say that, it would replace that painful inner voice of me saying, I fucking sucked as a husband. I didn't spend enough time with her, but I couldn't do that because I was going to school and working. And we were married when she was 16 and I'm 18. I had to get her parents' signature to approve the marriage. That was doomed. <laughs> but I loved her. And truth be told, I still love her. And, I, and my wife knows that. I, mean, I wouldn't leave my wife for her. But you know what it's like with your first. And anybody that says anything otherwise is a fucking liar. But that scarred me. And I wanted to fix that so bad. I was willing to do anything. And any kind of monetary loss. Hey, the fuck's that? I just lost my wife. How much more could I lose?
money and it's replaceable. I can't get my wife back. So for my first six years, I wrestled with that stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't get through it. No book worked for me. No course worked for me. Everybody fucking failed me in my eyes as a mentor. Now, once I was able to fix those character flaws, then I was teachable. Now think about that. Because this is a really hard question. And a lot of you know this is true and you've ignored it and you tried to pretend it wasn't real for you. But are you really at this moment right now, are you in a position to be taught effectively? Or do you have something in you that's broken that's going to prevent you from really being diligent and suffer the normalcy of the ebbs and flows of winning and losing while you're learning how to do this? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I think the majority of you are not. And that's the, why, that's the reason why I talk to you the way I talk to you, because I had to endure it too. And I have a lot of students and they, they're very honest with me and they wrestle with these things too. And when they finally get through that, they forgive themselves. They forgive the people that hurt them. Like I forgive my wife. My wife, when I say my wife, my first wife. I often think, and I had conversations with my wife several times when we have drives together. I'm like, she's like, what are you thinking right now? I said, if I can be honest with you and you not get angry, I'm thinking right now, I wish my wife could see me right now. Because when she left, she didn't believe that anything I was going to ever do was going to be successful. Because she was a kid, just like I was. And she heard my same uncles and aunts and you know, such so talk down to us. We'll talk down to me saying, oh, it's a pipe dream. You're going to be working just like the rest of us. So if you doubt it, and then the, and the person you're married to's own family members tell you in the, in the witness of your own attention that that person you're married to isn't going to be successful too, you're young and impressionable. So all of that weighed on her heavily. And she was sexually abused since she was eight years old. All of those things. She had a lot of mental baggage. And it was easy for her to do what? Just escape. Cut her losses short. And I just want her to see you were wrong. But I don't want to lose it. Going through that at the moment, then, that was hard. Like, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to hang around my friends. I didn't want to do shit. I stopped working out and it was just depression. And the only thing that motivated me was, you know what? Fuck computer science. Fuck that. My uncle talked about this trading shit and that book that I threw away into the corner because I bought this guy's course, Ken Roberts. I said, I'm going to go read that again and I'm going to go into this and I'm going to, I'm going to do that because if I can make money doing that, everybody's going to find that successful because you know there was a movie out there called them places it had dan Aykroyd and eddie murphy in it really funny movie even it's it's dated but it's still funny i watched that and i was thinking to myself you know what i'm going to be a comeback kid i'm going to fucking do that okay i'm going to be successful in trading commodities that's that was going to be my my avenue now i didn't have what you have available to you and i'm not saying just me as a mentor there's so many resources that's for free right now that you can tap into for information. Now, I'm not talking courses because there's a lot of that bullshit doesn't work. But resources at your fingertips. The, the thing I'm holding in my hand right now talking into, this stupid ass fucking cell phone that I can't stand carrying around, it has more information in it and uh, ability to do things that 25 years ago, our own president couldn't have this much control and power over. And, and he was the president. <laughs> so... It's amazing what technology has developed in, in recent years and decades. But I needed to, to feel good about myself. So I went from re trying to replace a painful feeling of loss, depression, and, and self-worth being next to none to I got to stop thinking like that 
and focus on the target. What am I trying to do here? Because if I'm just trying to replace a bad moment or feeling right now, maybe you're in a failed relationship. I have several women in my mentorship that have, some of them started the mentorship together with their male counterparty and they separated. As soon as they started seeing success, the male said, I'm out of here. And now they're dealing with, yes, they know how to trade, but they can't trade now because they're hurt. And they're asking me, you know, how to fix that. The only way I could do it was number one, I turned to Christ to, I focused on the task. What is it that I was trying to do? I was replacing a negative feeling. So that way I can have a, a feel good moment, replacing a bad moment. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, you, your mind can only focus on one thing. And being bipolar and obsessive, my mind races a thousand miles an hour and there's dozens of thoughts that are wrestling to try to be the one in the front of the line. And it's very difficult for me to focus like that. And you've probably seen it in this discussion too, because I'm all over the place.